What is up everybody and welcome to part two of this edition of a retro game haul. System Psycho, the one and only, What's back up? here. He brought pickups. Uh, if you haven't checked it out already, I'm going to give a link in the description box. Check out part one, dude. We go straight cartridge cartel on oh, you. Yeah. Master System, Nintendo, dude, crazy shit. Like really rare stuff on his side, rare stuff on my side, just all kinds of crazy stuff. Check it out. If you like cartridges, this is that's the episode for you. I mean, if you don't like that, why would you be watching this video? I don't understand. Why would you even be here? Do you just like watching a couple of idiots on a porn couch talk? <laughs> I mean, because if you so, then you're welcome. All right. This might have been used in a porn. I don't know. I got it at a yard sale for 50 bucks. They might have been a porn company. I don't know. I, I'm not going to look at this thing with a black light. I'm yeah, afraid to do that. Who knows? It's not going to be my jizz. I just know that word. <laughs> Sorry. Get like a what is it, a black light? Like, I'd be like, oh my god, this, this this couch is more crudded up than the fucking monkey from <laughs> Outbreak. You know, this is terrible. There might be like oh, super dude. AIDS on this thing. It's disgusting. All right. So, um, we got disc based stuff this time. I guess uh, we'll just jump right into it. Go. Cool. Yeah. So, first up for old Jimbo, I got some OG Xbox. I love OG Xbox. Okay. I really do. It's such a wealth of great games. Old school arcade ports, really obscure shooters, horror games. Like, there's just, there's so much stuff a lot of on people, OG Xbox. A lot of people consider an OG Xbox like the second Dreamcast. Have you heard of that? That's a really good analogy, actually. I never thought of that. They say that's like the successor to the Dreamcast. When yeah. you, yeah, because there's like, there's a lot of good stuff on there. You know, but I mean, it, it definitely sold a lot better than the Dreamcast. Because, I mean, dude, there's like, how many games are there for the OG Xbox? It's like, this guy to be like seven or eight hundred yeah, at least. Maybe I, even I'm a thousand. Sure. Like, they a produced lot. the shit out of that. So, we got a semi obscure one. I'm not going to call it rare. NAM 67, or excuse me, Shell Shock, NAM 67. This game actually has a sequel that I think I'd rather have than this because it's like this, but like zombies in Vietnam. Like, that's the main really? difference. Yeah. So it's like, it takes kind of like a hard right turn into horror land or, or fucking murder town where you're the mayor, motherfucker. So, yeah, um, basically, all right. So, unnerving realism. Experience the chaotic, atrocious, and unconventional warfare of Vietnam. Fight your way through a variety of missions ranging from large-scale battlefield encounters with the NBA and to stealth-based missions. Develop a fresh rookie to a hard-edged special forces operative. And receive mission briefings, test weapons, or listen to 1960 tunes from Roy Orbison, John Lee Hooker, and more. According to Xbox and XBM, rather, the smell of napalm in your Xbox. Damn. That wouldn't smell very good. So, I don't know, man. Like, I played some Vietnam games for the Xbox that were really awesome. I can't remember. There was a name. Oh, damn, what the hell was it? Like, Conflict Vietnam or something like that? Dude, that was the most fucked up Vietnam game I've ever played. Like, you're running into the fucking North Vietnamese army in the Viet Cong. They're like, yeah, fuck you, GI! Like, they actually say that when you mm -hmm. roll up on them. Like, a lot. Okay. I'm not talking one cutscene. I'm talking, like, the average bot says that to you. It's fucked up. I don't know if they call them Charlie or, you know, yeah. shout out racial slurs or something like that, but I don't know. It's really weird. So, I don't know. Hopefully this one's going to be dark and maybe not so shitty. Good shit. OG Xbox. What are you going to do? I have one Xbox pickup, and that is Otogi 2. This mm. is exclusive to the Xbox. I do not have the first one. I just have this one. I found this at like a CD game exchange. Nice. And I've been I've been trying to find this for a while because um, this game plays like it's like Bayonetta. It's like oh. one of those uh, hack and slash, Devil May Cry type games. Yeah. And it's made by Sega. Mm. And so I'm still looking out for the first one, but okay. yeah, I find this at, at a good price. And you know, again, this is like one of those games that people think that like it's like a successor to the Dreamcast. You know, it's like one of those cool arcade type type games. Yeah. Um, and exclusive to the Xbox, so if you want to play this game, you can, you know, it's only to the Xbox, so. Is it an expensive game? Nah, not really, I mean, um, I paid, like, six bucks for it. Damn. That was a good price, but if you go online, you'll probably pay, like, maybe 15 bucks. Oh, okay. It's not bad. Damn, same, dude, you're, you're slumming it with this yeah, game. Same thing with, uh, <laughs> with the first one. So you're normally going after the high-end shit, you're yeah. like, you're, you're slumlording this shit <laughs> with this thing. Yeah, but, so I mean, I just, game. I, I want to play it, man, it's, it's one of the games I want for the Xbox, so. Okay. Copped it. Good Sweet. shit. Cool. 
So next up we actually have a collector's edition for the Xbox 360. Um, this is one that I believe was initially released digital only. I could be wrong. If I am, please correct me in the comments. Don't freak out and be like, that's not the way it worked. Guys, I don't know everything. That's my recollection. I first remember seeing it on the Xbox 360 store as a digital only game. But I think what happened later was they eventually just decided to release it. And I happen to get the collector's edition. That would be Deadfall Adventures. So this is definitely a kind of obscure Xbox 360 game. This didn't get a wide publication. Just finding a copy of this is actually difficult. Yeah, like I, I've never even heard of that game. Yeah, it's 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 really kind of strange. Like it was sort of later in the Xbox 360's lifespan. Like not towards the end, but definitely like the Xbox One was on the horizon. Okay. So um, if I had to give you the elevator pitch on this, okay, so you're you're basically the the descendant of Alan Quartermain. I forget your dude's first name, but his last name's Quartermain. So, um, you're kind of in Egypt and places like that, like hunting down like treasures and stuff like that. And there's like mummies jumping out of coffins at you and shit like that. It's a first person shooter. And you're just getting in all kinds of adventures and stuff. It does have a multiplayer, you know, it does have classic deathmatch and things like that, up to 12 players, treasure hunt mode, and actually has co-op survival mode hmm. for four players. So, um, you're basically, according to this, it says inspired by the novels of H. Ryder Haggard. So I guess it's just based on a book. But, um, yeah, it's just, what is this, like the 1940s or 50s or something? All right, you're James Lee Quartermain, descendant of the legendary adventurer Alan Quartermain. Reluctantly, Quartermain agrees to help the U.S. government find a powerful artifact before the Nazis or the Russians. So, it's basically Indiana Jones with zombies, hmm. if I had to call it something. So, I guess that's, that's what we're dealing with right here. So, the collector's edition, definitely very unusual, almost like a PC-looking box here. That's true, it does look like a PC box. There's your DLC and stuff in there. The how game much, how much is this game? If it's hard, it has a map. If it's, a, if it's an uncommon game, how much is it worth? Is it expensive? Um, it, cheap? it depends, man. Like, it seems to be, like, all over the map. I've seen copies go for as high as $100. What? Yeah, because they didn't sell for a lot of these. They didn't sell a lot of these, rather. Um, I got lucky, and I got mine for $25. Oh, I wow. think. Just, like, a lucky thing. But, I mean, just, just doing a search for the collector's edition of this. You're not going to get a lot of results. It's just, you know, I mean, it's basically worth whatever someone's willing to pay for it. And I was like, I played the digital, I think it was free one month on, on Xbox Live, and I was like, I'll give it a shot. And I was like, I wouldn't mind having a copy of this. Like, this is probably going to be a rare game because they didn't have a large print run. So gotcha. okay. I thought I'd give it a shot. Cool. So, Deadfall Adventures. What you got, dude? All right, so I got one Saturn pickup, okay. and that is The Legend of Oasis. I uh, I traded in a bunch of PS4 games that are really shitty, and then at East Starland, the store around here, mm -hmm. and I ended up copying this. Yeah, this is I'm not, I think this is a sequel. Have you heard of the game for the Sega Genesis called Beyond Oasis? No. It's one of the later releases of games. It's it's one of those expensive games for the Sega Genesis. Hmm. Um, but I think this is a sequel. This is the Legend of Oasis. So. Nice. The way the game plays, it's like kind of top view, and you're like this guy with a sword, and it's kind of like Zelda Alundra for the PS1. It's pretty cool. Um, the yeah, cover does the cover does it no justice, man. But uh, it's one of the cheaper Sega Saturn games I still needed. It's still it's getting up there in price, but I decided to get this now. Oh, it uses the backup card too. Yeah, I nice. decided to get it now before it gets even more expensive. And so, yep. So you need the backup card to play. Legend of Oasis. Exactly. So, nice. There you go. So I got a pair of Nintendo mobile games. We'll talk about this one first. Dr. Franken. I don't know, but it was really cheap. Where'd you find it? Amazon or eBay. I can't remember. It was just one of those weird things where it was like really cheap in a bundle of stuff. And I was like, oh why not? You know, so yeah, I basically got it. I mean, depending on how you look at it, I kind of got it for free. Because mm -hmm. I wasn't after this, but... I mean, dude, it's a, I like weird Game Boy games. Like, I'm not a huge Game Boy collector, but I like... I mean, there's certain things that I like. Like, obviously, I like, you know, the Metroid games and stuff like that. I like the Castlevania games, the Double Dragon games, the Mario games. You know, all the stuff that is generally regarded as good stuff. But I really like the obscure stuff, too. Mm -hmm. I don't know why. I just do. Like, the really weird Game Boy games are actually kind of neat most yeah. of the time. So that's one. But uh, the other one, definitely not obscure. We got Resident Evil, The Mercenaries 3D. So basically, Resident Evil 5 comes out, and this is like the DS port of it, where they just took the Mercenaries part of it and made it its own game. Oh, okay. So it's just the multiplayer. So, but the cool part is, if you've got a friend with a DS, you can team up, dude. Oh, okay. You can rock out together. So, 
So that's more on the Resident Evil 5 ish? Yeah, yeah, it's like definitely. I'm, but you can play as more than just like Chris and Joe. You can play as like Wesker and stuff like that. It's got the additional characters. I think Hunk might be a playable character okay. too. But I mean, it's it's full co op and everything like that. And it's, from what I've seen of the screenshots, it's actually really close to the Resident Evil 5 console port. As far as the graphical quality, it's not all the way there, but it's real close. So, considering it's on the DS, that's actually pretty damn impressive. So, there is another obscure um, Resident Evil DS or 3DS game uh, called um, Deadly something. It's Resident Evil Deadly something like that, where it's basically like the first game. So it's like a PS1 port, hmm. but they utilize the second screen. Oh. So I okay. think you probably get your map open at all times, stuff like that. So it's kind of like an enhanced version of the original PS1 game. I love that game. It's one of my favorite games of all time, and I'd really like to get. It's a really hard to find game now, and oh, if really? you can find it, it's expensive as shit. So it's one of the few. It's one of the rare expensive DS games. Okay. So be on the lookout for that one. Deadly, whatever it is. Deadly Encounter. Deadly Alliance. I don't know. Deadly something. Deadly price point for sure. Mm -hmm. You might have to kill yourself to get it. Going with the whole Resident Evil trend, mm -hmm. I picked up Resident Evil Code Veronica X for the GameCube. GameCube. Yep. I, uh, again, I found this in the same place I found Otogi 2. It's a nice. CD game exchange. Were, um, were they slipping? Uh, yeah. The, the only thing is this, this didn't come with the manual, so mm. it was it was cheaper. That's why I bought it. Um, I do have it for the PS2, but from what I hear, um, the GameCube versions of these games, the Resident Evil games, are a little bit more uh, uncommon. Yes. Rare. Much more uncommon. And so I've always wanted this copy. Um, yeah. I do have, so now I have pretty much the Dreamcast, the GameCube, and the PS2 version. I'm not sure if I'm missing another version other than that. I think that's it. Um, but again, uh, from what I recently learned, this was supposed to be the original third sequel. Yes. And then ne Nemesis was just like a side story, but. It was, because it runs parallel with part two. Yeah. So, so yeah, it's, that's like a thing. But yeah, this is. This is the only one, basically, that hasn't been updated to modern consoles because they re-released four, they re-released two, you know, we got the new one, they re-released one, like this, and I, I guess you could say Nemesis, like those, like yeah, those, Nemesis, yeah, those two, yeah. then I think about it, those are pretty much the only ones that haven't been, like, given the, the reboot, remake, re-res, re-res. I think, re I think they're going to do it, though. I think so. We'll, we'll get into that a little bit later, but, because uh, we, we've got some games to talk about, but yeah, I think that's probably uh, bordering on inevitable. I would say, at least. Yeah. Speaking of which, I'm sure I'm definitely not the only guy who got a copy of this. We got the new Resident Evil 2 remake. I got the Best Buy edition, so I got the, the steel case with it for free and everything. I did spring for the collector's edition, so I paid the extra money for it. So I got the extra skins, uh, the retro soundtrack, which I haven't played yet, but it hurts a lot of fun. Wait, you got the one? So you got the one with the statue, or you got the deluxe edition? We'll call it the deluxe edition. Okay. okay. I didn't get all the. All, all the extra shit I got was digital, okay. other than the steel case. Yeah, yeah. So um, I heard the retro soundtrack is cool because like it has like the original pistol noises. Okay. So they're all low tech and shit in the modern game, which sounds like a lot of fun. The original <laughs> music, shit like, pff, pff. yeah, that sounds that sounds fun. Um, but the extra skins are really cool. You know, there's one where he looks like Rick Grimes from Walking Dead. Um, there's uh, the the DLC that they just released for it on Friday, I believe, um, where you get three additional stories. Yeah. Um, you get some the original uh, poly low polygon. That's the actual name that they have the skins, the low polygon skins. So it actually looks like the PS1 port. And I don't think I can say enough about how fucking amazing this yeah, game is. This this, game is this is one of the best games I have played in several yeah. years. Like considering that this is a remake of an existing game. It is amazing how much I loved playing this game. It was like it was like getting to experience Resident Evil 2 all over again. Mm -hmm. Like I'd never done it before. Because it has it has everything that made Resident Evil 2 awesome. Mm -hmm. They just took it one step further. Like they just they're doing some surprises. Like it, it has all the stuff that you want it to have. They just turn that fucking dial way up. Um, yeah, so many jump scare moments, like when the arm comes through the wall when you're talking to the guy in the fucking cell. Oh yeah. My first thought was that it's the nemesis. Oh, really? Because think about it. Like, yeah. as we mentioned earlier, this takes place at the exact same time as Resident Evil 3, and they're both yeah. in Raccoon City. They're just in different parts of town. True. So I figured, like, maybe it's the nemesis, dude. Like, maybe he's coming after Leon this time. It turns out it's someone else named Mr. X. I won't spoil the ending for you. It's definitely someone you know who it is. You, you'll, you'll see it at the end if you're, you know, crazy enough to make it that far. But um, Mr. X is definitely 
this that's probably the most intense part of any video game I've ever played because he literally can go almost anywhere he wants. <laughs> I counted like three rooms that he couldn't get into, but like the main room yeah. when you're in the police station, when the first time that he walked in there, I almost had a fucking heart attack. For I couldn't believe it. I was like, holy shit, he can get in here? Like, I figured he'd just be walking around the halls. Like, it, it would be like anywhere but your safe room that mm -hmm. you would just run into him. He just walks in there like, that ain't shit. Yeah. And I'm like, oh my god. I'm like, dude, this is... The only thing scarier, I think, the only thing creepier than being face-to-face -face with him is when you hear him walking around. Oh, yeah, you hear the boots. Yeah, it's very unsettling because you never know where he's going to show up. And there's been several occasions where I didn't think he was anywhere near me. I opened a door, and that motherfucker is right in front of me. Mm -hmm. Like, he's literally coming in the door as I'm walking. I'm like, Jesus Christ! Like, losing my mind, just scaring the bejesus out of me. <laughs> so, it's... This is just such an incredible game, dude. Like, it's not just like what they did with the first game where they just, you know, slapped a new coat of paint on it yeah. and it's more the same game. They did change a little. This is like they rebuilt this motherfucker from the ground up. And zombies can come through doors now and everything. I mean, it's just, it's like Resident Evil, like, Uber Edition is basically what you're getting here. Like, the gore effects, they made like a, there's a special gore engine that makes the gore look wet. Oh, Some yeah. kind of new thing that Capcom came up with where, like, you notice the blood look like wet yeah like it's like like wetter than in any game i've ever seen like that's some brand new tech basically I mean, the graphics in that game is real good dude it looks you got a 4k tv and an xbox one x like i do this thing looks like a million yeah, bucks dude. it really does this is such an incredible game it really is it's one of the few games i've played in a while that made me not want to stop playing it i know like i just want to keep playing because i felt like the i played it on normal so i felt like the puzzles and what you got to do amateur like I felt like it was like it was right it was it was good like yes. it wasn't too hard to figure yeah. out what you had to do mm -hmm. you know it wasn't too easy and then the amount of ammo they gave you and just, just the right amount of difficulty yeah so, so yeah, you're exactly. a lot smarter than I did because I played in a hardcore the first time so for those of you not in the know okay so hardcore like any other I mean it's the hardest difficulty level so you got less ammo the enemies are stronger and in this case you can only save when you have ink ribbons. So we're talking OG Resident Evil hard. Just like the original games where you had to have an ink ribbon to save back in those days, man. Like it, this this follows the lineage. So to me it's not being cheap. That to me that's just it being authentic. Yeah. So I did finish it on hardcore difficulty, actually live streamed it if you want to check it out. Um so I I didn't I didn't I didn't bother with that the second time I played through on the Claire story. I was like, yeah, dude, I, I finished it the first time on hardcore, I have nothing else to prove. That's freaking stupid. But and then there's like the next goal posts where you got to beat it in like less than two hours or whatever. Then you get like S mode, you know, and stuff. But there is an advantage to doing that. If you complete S mode, and there's actually S plus, okay, you, where you beat it in less than two hours and you only save three times. <laughs> S plus does something else. But S mode gives you a samurai pistol with unlimited ammo. Oh, okay. So when you play through that shit again, if you're going for S plus, you have a massive advantage. Yeah. I mean, you can just cat bitches left and right. So. Yeah, but I mean, as my buddy Shifty, what's up, dude, would say, it's basically impossible to get an S rank accidentally. He's like, you really have to try. He's like, you can do it. He's like, a normal person can beat this in two hours. Yeah. If you really just stay on task, he's like, but you're not going to do it by accident. Okay. So, I mean, my best time, I think, was like five hours. When I was playing it through on Clarion, dude, I thought I was hauling ass. You know, because this is my second playthrough. I'm like, dude, I'm trucking through this motherfucker. And I look at my time, I'm like, yeah, I'm not even close. So, I mean, what do you think about all those people, like, getting, like, the... The S pluses and the S, like my buddy Shifty, like doing it in the first 24 hours. Dude, uh, we call those sweat lords, dude. <laughs> sweat okay, lords. what's a sweat lord? Uh, sweat lords. <laughs> what the fuck? Sweat lords. Right. I guess you could say sweat lords are like another term for like tryhards. Oh, that's definitely my buddy Shifty. So, you know, it's, it's for example, like people that are like, like they do these ridiculous ass things like they beat like a really super hard game in mm -hmm. like one day you're just like dude, come on dude really? you're like such a sweat lord dude <laughs> it's like you're so oh. sweaty dude it's like can't you just chill out like, for a sec you like is he mean? actually sitting there playing the game like sweating no i don't, I don't know about that but like, is it literal um an another That's what I wanna know. Uh, 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 it could be yeah you know you could be sweating because of all the hype or like, or oh like, my god, I gotta finish. Yeah, or, 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 so like, uh, or like, or a, like, a sweat lord could be. Uh, another example would be like, a sweat lord is always hyped for like all the AAA shit. 
You know, and they always have to okay. get the game right when it releases. You okay. know what I mean? Like, yeah. they have to play it like in real time. They can't play it like a year after. Like, they're just they're sweaty. They're sweat lords. <laughs> it's like they need it now. You know, they're just like so pressed. And and it's, and it's like it's just oh. like to like, you know what I mean? Just to like say they did it or to be like to prove that they have like, I don't know, man. They just waste time. But yeah, those are like sweat lords. Too. Resident Evil 2, Sweat Lord Edition. <laughs> sweat Lord Edition. <laughs> yeah. Wow. We, we, we've got a new term here on the Hall, man. Sweat, sweat Lords. Lords. I know my, my boy Gatsuda, he knows about Sweat Lords. So. Do you know any Sweat Lords? Yeah, I know Sweat Lords. Like you have, you have friends that, that would quantify yeah, as that? Yeah, I know. I mean, I'm I only have a couple, I think. I, I'm a Sweat Lord in collecting because like, I only collect like uh, box games. You know yeah, I, mean? I was about to say that, actually. I was like, yeah, you're definitely a yeah, Sweat Lord. Yeah, so I'm collector. like a Sweat Lord. So like, if I see like, a loose <laughs> Nintendo game, I won't even touch it. <laughs> <laughs> She's making me look like a fucking charlatan. <laughs> like, look at all these loose cords, yeah, man. So I'm just like, 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 nah, dude. Like, so I'm like sweaty, dude. You know? <laughs> Only I, go for the box. I, I can somewhat understand like parts of that. Like for Turbo Graphics, I've got to have it complete. Okay, yeah, like, I was the same way too. I I gotta no, I've got to have it like. I mean, like it doesn't have to necessarily be in the cardboard box, but I definitely do need it to be in the case. Like that's where I draw the line. Like if it's got the box, great. If it doesn't. Mm. How's that cheese cracker, man? It's good, man. I had to, I had to take it. Back. I mean, it was, it was so good. We have to do it on camera. <laughs> I was so sweaty, man. I got hungry, dude. <laughs> He's a cheese cracker sweat lord. Oh, man. Oh, yeah, yeah. He's been, like, just housing these things the whole time. But that's all right. But, yeah, man. You know, sweat, so. sweat lords. Sweat lords. So, we know all of you out there know one. Well, yeah. Watch out, man. I know about you sweat lords. I know. I know. <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna change my buddy's name from Shifty Capone to like Sweat Lord Capone. <laughs> Sweat, Lord Sweat, Lord, McGee. Sweat Lord Capone. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, Resident Evil 2, man. Um, five stars. Like seriously, five. that is, that is the first must-buy game of 2019. Damn right. Like you, it's nearly perfect. It is. I didn't find anything I didn't li um, not like about it. Like I just, I have no, I have no complaints. I have nothing to add really. Yeah. It's like no Capcom. Finally got their head out of their ass, and they finally got it right. Yeah, and they gave the DLC for free. Yes, you got the add-ons and the skins so far for free. And the stories, the three stories. Yes, the three stories. Exactly. So they're really hard, though, from what I understand. But my only, all right, here's my. I'm gonna. This is a minor nitpick. What the hell took them so long between remake A and remake B? Because we got the original Resident Evil remake was on the GameCube. You know, they, we re-released it in high definition for like the X-Bone and shit like that, but the, that's just a re res version of that game. It's the same game. Mm -hmm. We're talking, what is that, two console generations ago? Mm -hmm. Better part of ten years at least? What the, I mean, that was a massive seller when that came out. Like the Resident Evil remake was like a really big deal. Because it was such a big deal, we, they put out Resident Evil Zero. So, you know, we got the prequel. So, from what I, I just, it's funny you asked this. So I recently saw a video on like the history of uh, Resident Evil, okay. and one of the things they said was when they remade the first one and then Zero came out, the the re uh, the re uh, <coughs> part one on the GameCube, it did good, mm -hmm. but it, it it was far under what they expected it to be. Wow. And God. same with really? Zero. So they were sellers, but they weren't that good. They weren't as what they would have have expected it to sell. Yeah. So I think that's what probably hindered them from actually remaking part two. And another thing too, man, is that it was only on the GameCube. Yeah. So that's I mean we did get it later on the Xbox One. Like, mm -hmm. you know, we did get the that's the version of play of that game because it's actually in ten eighty P, it's running sixty frames, it's very clean. But yeah, I mean one could make the argument that the only reason that we got this Resident Evil two remake is those dudes who were home brewing. Did you hear about that? Oh yeah, yeah. The guys who were basically making it themselves and Capcom shut them down with a lawsuit and was like, we're actually working on it already. Mm -hmm. Which, were they? We don't, we don't well, know. I think it's a lot of things Maybe. too, man, because a lot of people demanded that they remake 2, because 2 is like a really fan favorite. Two's my favorite. Yeah, so, but at the same so. time, during, 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 from GameCube all the way to now, mm -hmm. until the part two, you saw Resident Evil shift from like, horror mm -hmm. to like action. So five was kind of action. Four definitely started it. Yeah, four exactly. That was the first. Oh, that action. was really good. That was good. 
and then five and then six just like people just didn't fuck with six yeah. so i think a lot of people started demanding that like resident Evil went back to their roots and that's what happened with part seven and, yeah and so they did part seven they saw how much people actually liked this and they were like oh it's actually you know maybe going back to like sure. what resident Evil was so they did it too. I, I, I mean that's my opinion that's my opinion um dude all we need now then is resident evil 3 and code veronica mm -hmm. on the xbox one then i will literally have the entire yeah. Resident Evil saga on one console. Yeah. The whole thing. Pretty much. Because I have four and five and six, meaning the upgraded versions. I already have that. I have Biohazard. I have the first one. I have zero. I actually have a physical copy of that. Yeah. They, they did a dual release for that. So yeah. I actually oh, yeah, have yeah, yeah, yeah. I have that. I have both Resident Evil Revelations games, which are really good, by the way. Those are good. Those are fantastic. Um, that's three and Code Veronica are really the only two that we're missing. I would love to see those get the update. I really would. It'd be so nice to just be like, dude, I've got the whole fucking thing on one console. Like, I have the ideal versions of these games here. Yeah. That's the same thing with Yakuza. Yeah. It's just For like, PS4. it's just one of those things, man. It'd be nice to have it all under one house. Yeah. Just That's saying. So, Capcom, get to it. I, I'm pretty sure they're going to work on three, like, right now. Yeah, Capcom's back. It, they sold a crap ton of copies of Resident Evil 2. For a remake, it sold five million copies in its first week. Exactly. I think that's the highest selling remake ever. Okay. I mean, five million in the first week for a new game is not bad. Like, it's not Call of Duty numbers or anything like that. But for for a non Call of Duty Madden game, that's pretty respectable. But another thing is, is that that's what you consider like a one player game. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like all these games now that sell, they're all multiplayer. Yeah, this online. is one player. And so you know, for, yeah. for the longest time, companies have been saying that like single player games, like not we don't want to make them dead, which is bullshit. Well, like God of War proved that wrong. Resident Evil Two proved that. I mean, you know, there's room for both. I mean, there is. So it doesn't yeah. have to be. Yeah. No, let's let's do both. So, yeah. Sometimes it's cool just to play by yourself. Yeah. I mean, I prefer. Yeah, I prefer that. I prefer the single player ones, honestly. Yeah. But I like both. So. Word. Resident Evil 2. Go get it. So, I think we got a fat stack here, man. Yeah, so uh, I picked up some PS2 games. Uh, I'll just show, Dose. Yeah, I'll just show pretty much all four of them right now. What do you got? Um, first one is Legacy of Cain Defiance. Mm. Um, Good series. You know, uh, I really wanted to get into this series. I've only played, like, maybe the second one. But I know there's a there's a, there's a a bunch of these games. There are. And I don't, I don't know how many, but... I didn't even know this one I'm existed. So. Waiting for the next installment. Really? Because everyone's just like, what happened to Legacy of Kane, dude? Yeah. It was such a popular series. And so I got this one for like maybe five bucks. Nice. So cop that. Um, I found this at the CD Game Exchange. This is a... Uh, Lament of Innocence. Yep. Castlevania Lament of Innocence. What is this? It's like a 3D version? Yeah, 3D Castlevania. Yeah. I mean, I like the cover. It looks old school. It is. Um, it's not a great Castlevania I, game, but it's okay. Yeah, I heard this is one of the better 3D ones. Yes. So again, most of them are terrible. Yeah. So again, I got it for cheap. That's why I bought it. So okay. That. Um, next Hello. One is there we go. Raiden three. Do you say Raiden or Raiden? I say Raiden. <laughs> I say Raiden. You say Raiden. But I say Raiden when we're talking about Mortal Kombat. Okay. With this, I say Raiden because that's how I've heard the Japanese people pronounce it. Oh. And this is a very Japanese name. I just say Raiden. Or Raiden. So. <laughs> but uh, right. funny story is this is actually my second copy. Uh, originally, I bought this off of eBay maybe a couple years ago. But mm -hmm. when the seller, when I received it, it was like a Hollywood video case. I mean, it was oh, the cover. That. It was the cover, but like this was a Hollywood video, and I was like, what the fuck? So then I just decided just to re-get it again. So okay, got that. And then the last game is uh, Castle Shigami Two. Okay. This is a. Uh, Pretty much like a Japanese anime shmup. Shoot 'em up. Love those. Yeah, so this is part Love two. Shmups. And then part three came out on the Wii. Nice. Yeah, so uh, I, I I don't know what I was doing. I was just looking up random PS2 games online. I clicked on like uh, the ones that were going to end soonest. This game was like super cheap, dude. It was like <sighs> under 10 bucks. And I got it. Trigger pull. Got Excellent it. pickup, dude. Thank you. So, Red Dead Redemption 2. Um, Big contender for game of the year, probably going to win. Um, yeah, pretty much anytime Rockstar does anything, it's always them or Bethesda. You know, as far as what what wins game of the year, definitely worthy of it in my opinion. Yeah. Uh, RDR2, is a fan fucking fantastic game. So, I um, found a deal to get the original Red Dead Redemption Game of the Year edition. So it has all the DLC, including Undead Nightmare. That's the main reason I bought it. Is I never actually got to finish Undead Nightmare. Mm. So all this stuff, you know, all the good stuff is on there. And funny thing for you. This is one of the few Xbox 360 games that is optimized for the Xbox One X. 
where it actually looks significantly better if you have the XBLX. Really? Yes. So um, I believe, I don't remember what site, I'm going to just loosely quote them, um, but they basically said that this played on the Xbox One X is like the PC port that we never got for Red Dead Redemption. Meaning like higher res textures and stuff like that. And it's okay. it's just one of those things where they just kicked it up just a little bit where it just looks a little bit sharper. Um, you know, it just looks a little bit more polished. And um, I hadn't played it in forever, man. And I just, I forgot how much fun it was. You know, when you get the blunderbuss and stuff that runs on zombie guts and shit. And it's actually just a really, really fun game. And I got it for like $7. So... This exact game, yeah. I know there's a version that, but it's a 360 case version. Mm -hmm. So why is there an Xbox version? It's the same thing where it's like an Xbox One, Xbox 360 version, mm -hmm. but it's a 360 case. Yeah, version. it's a taller case, like yeah. they did with Doom 3. This is the Xbox One version, even though it says that the game will actually play on the Xbox One or the Xbox 360. Yeah, so I guess they just put out two this the Game of the Year edition or whatever you want to call. It. I don't know, whatever you want to call it. I don't know, but like I found it. It was really cheap. I still, I'm one of the few Gamers Club Unlocked members. Yeah, I we still have a too. membership. Mm -hmm. It's almost done, so I'm kind of like I'm yeah. milking it for every last mine, penny that it's mine worth. Mine September. Oh, dude, just crank it. Yeah. So this was like a seven dollar game, and I was like, why not? So it, it really does. I played it a little bit on Undead Nightmare. It looks fantastic on the Xbox. So it's just one of those things. That and Left 4 Dead. Left 4 Dead, they kicked out the PC specs. So, if you got the higher end console, it definitely seems to pay off. Cool. So, uh, what do we got? The last, the last game that just showed were PS2 games, but um, I want to show these two together because they kind of go hand in hand. So it's uh, Mobile Light Force mm -hmm. One and Two. So they have the same cover. They do. But they're two completely different games. <laughs> so believe it or not, Mobile Life Force 1 has nothing to do with the cover. You think it's like Charlie's Angel or something? That's like what that. I was about yeah. to say. Yeah. But what believe it or saying? not, this is actually the first Gunbird game. So, <laughs> so you know Gunbird 2 for the Sega Dreamcast? Mm -hmm. This is the first one. And then this Mobile Life Force 2 on PS2 is not Gunbird. It's a Japanese game, which is hard for me to pronounce. I, I might have thought it was Castle Shigami, the first one, but I doubt that. But again, it's it's two games with the same name, with the same cover, but two different games. Franchises. That's fucking weird. So it's weird. I know it's. And That's confusing. So the reason why they put those covers is because I believe Charlie's Angels was yeah. popular at the time, and so they figured. But I don't know, dude. I don't know why they did that. But it's cool. Does, does the game actually look anything like the cover? No. They're like, does it have anything? They're shmups. They're wow, that's that's bullshit. Yeah, they're shoot 'em ups. They're shmups, so. That's, <laughs> it has nothing to do yeah. with three hot chicks with guns. Nah, no, hell no. <laughs> that's just that's just some nonsense. And then I got two PS2 games, which are pretty, I don't know, pretty solid titles. First one is Eye Hander. From Squaresoft. Yep. Nice. Uh, the one this for a minute and this game was going up in price dude so luckily i found this at like some random little comic book shop they're selling uh used games and this one was probably like 30 dollars cheaper than what you would find online nice. so i bit the bullet and i bought it so cop that cool and then the last one was uh castlevania symphony of the night i mean this game needs no introduction the metroidvania castlevania game um i pretty much got this game for free the way i got it was i have a I buy a lot of stuff on eBay, so I get eBay bucks for Me everything I, I buy. Mm -hmm. And so during the holidays, I was buying a lot of because they were giving back a lot of eBay bucks. They were giving like 10% back and everything, so I bought a whole bunch of expensive stuff. And then I ended up having just enough to get this game for free. So nice. I love it when game. that happens. Hell yeah. So solid game, nice addition to the collection. Good pickup, dude. Sweet. What's next, dude? Okay, so you know how. Limited Run is like a company that does a lot of like uh, indie games yes. physically for the PS4. Much so, yes. Well, there's so. another company called Strictly Limited. Heard about them? Yes. One of the games I purchased from them was Gundemoniums. So, uh, That's a mouthful. This is actually another shoot 'em up. It's a shmup, but it's a horizontal shmup. And I believe it's a game that came out like in the late 90s. So it's like, it's kind of a cute em up. So the character, the anime girls are really big. Mm hmm. And, but again, it's like another bullet hell. It's a super hard game. Uh, and yeah, again, I love me some shoot 'em up. So, so that's definitely a, de uh, a cop. And then going with the same genre, I purchased, uh, gosh, I don't even know how to pronounce this, the Psycho, Psycho Collection. 
I would say that, yeah, Psycho. Psycho collection uh, for the Psycho. Switch. So these these didn't retail here in America. I had to get these off of Play Asia. Wow. But these are the Asian versions, which they're in English. So, mm -hmm. you know, it's not hard for me to read. So Oh, wow, they're like shoot 'em up collections. Yeah, so each one has uh, four shoot 'em ups. Awesome, dude. So, dude, the, I gotta get these. Yeah, the first one is has Strikers 1945, yeah. Gunberg, Samurai Aces, Soul Divide, which was on the PS1. Wow. And then the second one has Strikers 1945 Part 2, Gunbird 2, Tengai, and then Dragon Blaze. Wow, dude, I gotta get these. So, yeah, and I've had pretty good game nights with my friends. We beat all of these together. Fuck yeah. And they're actually coming out with a volume three. Not sure when that's gonna come out, but it's gonna have, like, Strikers 1945 Part 3. And How much like, are these? Oh, these are, like, 30 bucks. Oh, dude, I'm definitely gonna get yeah, this. I bucks. love shit like that, dude. So, yeah, so awesome. I definitely got these. So, I, I like to get uh, these, like, old school types of games for my Switch. I just sure. feel like the Switch is. That's just the kind of system it is for me, so... Do you have the SNK collection yet? I do not. Oh, I gotta get I, that. I, yeah, I've heard I it's awesome. Get that, so. the, it's the really obscure... Like, it has the Akari games. Yeah. It has the arcade and the NES ports. Oh, really? Yes. So yeah. it has, like... You have, like, options between, like, yeah. you want to do it legit arcade or if you want to do it NES. Mm -hmm. It's got a bunch of the obscure, like, Dino Island 2 yeah, and shit. Yeah, like, yeah. all the really weird SNK yeah. shit. It has all that. Like, all the stuff that flies under the POW. Okay. And it has the NES one. It has the arcade port. That's tight. It, it's it coming is. out for PS4 too. I guess it was yes. like a Times exclusive for the Switch, but now it's coming out. For PS4. When I look at that game, I want to play it on the Switch. Yeah, same here. That's like, I want it for. I rather get it for the Switch. That's why I love the Switch, like Wild Guns Reloaded and stuff like that, because they cater to the OG people yeah. like us. Like Nintendo is so fucking good at that, dude. There, they yeah. really are. So, very cool. So, last but certainly not least, <laughs> what right, we got? So this is my last gaming pickups, and you know I've I've owned a complete Dreamcast collection for close to maybe. Four four or five years now and I had no idea this existed until maybe a couple months ago uh -oh. but this is Speed Devils um, but this isn't just any Speed Devils game uh, this is what they call the clean version mm. so in the regular version of, of Speed Devils it has a devil face yeah like Satan or whatever correct yeah. um, this one as you can see does not have that now from what they say the story is this is a Walmart exclusive Ooh. so what they wanted to do was you know they want to make it for kids so they specifically just made this variant cover for Walmart so that's why this one's like a lot harder to find but what's funny is that the disc still has a double face on it no. so it's just the book it's just the manual that's different Oops. now this is honestly this is probably the most expensive Dreamcast game out there and when I found out uh -huh. that it existed I had to get it man because I already got a full sale I was like dude I'm not really. I really don't collect variants, but this one was different. I don't know why. All right, how much? We got it. We got it. Oh, dude, I don't even want to say how that. much. Uh, it was a couple hundred bucks. I'll just say. That. Oh, I thought you were gonna talk about like a thousand or something. No, I was about to say like, hell, bro. Like, hell no. A couple hundred. That's reasonable. Yeah, and I got a really, I got a good one in real good shape. So yeah. So. Absolution. Absolutely. You can't put right a there. price on that. Exactly. So now I got a real complete. So okay. you're a seg, bro. Seg bro. I'm a turbo. Bro. Well, you're a turbo too. Yeah, I'm turbo. Yeah, we're, you're a seg bro. I'm, try, I'm trying to become all A bro. dream bro. Yeah, a dream bro. <laughs> <laughs> so, now that we're done with this stuff, I think it's, uh, it's about that time, bro. I think it's... <laughs> you ready? I mean, I'm ready. Are you ready? Oh, yeah, I'm always ready. Is, is Arnold ready? ready? Is, is the question. Okay. Until he's ready, I'm not ready. Are you ready, Arnold? It's turbo time. It's turbo time! So I guess we can start off with the games. We'll do this one first. Um, this could have been awesome, but the dickhead who sold it to me didn't pack it very well, so I have like a ding box. Oh really? Freaking Sonic Spike. Yeah, it wasn't oh. like that. I, I did get I basically got half my money back. So it's oh, fine. I, did I didn't have to pay a lot for it. I I think I paid fifteen bucks for it. Oh, and it's complete in the box, but yeah, he he didn't pack it very well, and I got it, and I was like, yeah, I don't remember that being in the pictures, but, douche, dude, I've already got this complete in a really minty box, so this was just like a keep it for a rainy day kind of thing, like if I got a buddy who needs it or whatever, I'll trade it to him or something, so it, it's, all, it's not the end of the world, so okay. that's that, and we actually have another one that's in really minty shape, we have, I don't know if you call it Vestile or VA Steel. I guess I you think, can call it Vestio. Yeah, I'd call okay. it Vestio. So, um, Turbo Graphics, working design games. That's what that little thing is there. They were kind of famous for their freaking amazing um, 
Turbo Graphics games. Um, I'm gonna be honest with you guys. The little bit that I've played this, this game looks boring as fuck. Like I don't know how else to say it other than it just. Maybe it's like a really interesting game to the right type of person. It's it's a real time strategy kind of thing. Oh, is sorta. it? Sorta. I hate that. Anymore. Like kind of sorta, but it just it didn't catch my fancy. The only reason I'm buying this is because it's a Turbo Graphics game. Because I'm already. I'm within striking distance of the fucking finish line here, man. I've got like 20, less than 20 games left. Okay. So, Good. this was just one, uh, seen it a million times, you know, I, it's not that it's that uncommon or that hard to find, it's just like, how much do you want to pay for it? Yeah. It was a good price, worked out a deal, pulled the trigger, just one of those things. One more for the collection. Every one of these I buy, it gets more expensive, but I get one step closer. Yeah. So, let's deal. So next, we got some uh, little kind of encoutrements um, for the Turbo Graphics. I love collecting things like this. Um, in particular, we have the Turbo Graphics 16 bonus book, hmm. which I believe came with Turbo Duo, um, because I remember wow. seeing that on the box where it's just like you buy this, we're going to give you like all these vouchers for like a crap ton of free games. So yeah. you have all these coupons for stuff, which some of them have been redeemed, I think. Um, like. $10 bonus on a turbo booster. I don't know why they would give you that if you have the turbo duo, but whatever. Uh, five bonus, five dollar bonus on turbo tap. Uh, five dollar bonus on a turbo graphics game. I guess you can just pick whatever one you want. That dude, I would love to have a turbo chip game that just said turbo chip. <laughs> that would be awesome, actually. Somebody needs to make that. Um, another one for a game. Um, yeah, somebody already redeemed some of these, but you have like a $50 bonus on the turbo graphics CD. $10 bonus on the turbo stick. Um, let's see, and basically the rest are just games other than the Turbo Booster. Like, that's a bunch of $5 coupons for games, mm. so you can get those cheap. But yeah, it doesn't have all the coupons in it. Somebody obviously redeemed some of them. That was just really cool that they threw that in, because they were, they were really trying to get everyone, you know, to kind of get on board with that. So, just a little cool uh, trinket that's cool. to go into the collection. That's sweet. Uh, next up, we actually have, um, looks like a manual uh, for JB Harold Murder Club. I already own the game, but this is actually not. This is actually a separate thing that came with it um, called the Investigation Notes. Uh, there's a couple games for TurboGrafx that had stuff like that. Um, like the Sherlock Holmes games, for example, there are two of them. Had these little miniature newspaper things that came with them that actually tied into the story. They would actually kind of help you unravel the mysteries. You can be like, oh, you know, this person was there at this time. So uh, this one has actually been written in by the previous owner. So it's kind of like buying a used textbook. You've already got the cheat notes. Mm -hmm. You know, you've already got all the shit highlighted. So, I honestly, I don't mind that that's happened because that means this was actually used. It wasn't sitting on a shelf somewhere. This actually belonged to somebody. I don't really mind that. Like, if I had my way, yeah. would I have like this and I'd have like a minty fresh version? Mm -hmm. Sure, but I, I really don't mind stuff like that because that means that this thing has a story. This belonged to a kid. Yeah, I like you know, one day. seeing stuff like that. It's neat. It's like seeing what they came up with and the little notes and stuff like that. It's, it's kind of cool. actually played this obscure ass game. <laughs> yes, somebody actually played this game <laughs> enough and they liked it enough to write down the investigation notes. So it's all good, man. Cool. And last but certainly not least, we have a copy of Turbo Edge. Oh, sorry. That's the cover. Turbo Edge. So what is Turbo Edge? Basically, Turbo Edge is the predecessor to Turbo Play, okay. more or less. Like this is like it's like a newsletter or something. More or less, yeah. This is like the Turbo Graphics newsletter where it's just you know, let's see, you got a profile of a freaking gamer here, you know, kind of like a black and white kind of Nintendo Power and stuff. Talks about upcoming games like Turbo Graphics 16 breaks the four megabyte uh, turbo chip barrier. So, oh look, how, how about this? Raiden is actually the first turbo chip based game to offer 6 megabytes of power. So at the time, that was the highest capacity turbo chip game. So it says previously, um, the 16-bit CD-ROM um, was what they needed to break through that barrier, but apparently they figured it out. Yeah, I know I know some, not all the turbo chip games were, were made equal. Like if you look at, um, we didn't get it here, but the Street Fighter 2 Championship Edition, which was only in Japan, hmm. you can see that that Hue card is actually slightly raised. It's got a it's got a supplementary board sitting on top of it. Oh really? Just to get that amount of like data into that thing, it's like that much thicker okay. than your typical Hue card. Like there's just little tricks like that um, to be able to uh, to squeeze the extra power out of these things. But I just love collecting um, stuff like this. You know, like the the Q and A and stuff. Like people writing in letters asking, like, hey, you know, what about this? What about How that? How did you find this? Random eBay score, dude. 
I hunt for Turbo Graphics stuff like all the time. You yeah. believe? But it's like, how do you know with. this even exists? I've done my homework. <laughs> I'm kind of like, obviously, I'm obsessed with this. Yeah. I talk about it. I mean, people are just like, oh god, he's gonna talk about fucking Turbo Graphics again. Chubo's fucking. But it's like one trick pony. That's. Uh, it's so just my thing, dude. Like the the crap that you know about Sega Master System, like you know with the UPC code. That's how I am about Turbo Graphics. I know like everything there is to know about it, just because I'm obsessed with it. Okay. And I have been since I was ten so, years old. But I'm saying, like, do you know like all the merchandise that has come out from Turbo Graphics? More or less, yeah. Really? It's very rare that I find something I didn't know about. Okay. Like maybe like something I heard about it but haven't seen yet. Okay. But I don't remember the last time I saw something where I was like, I've never heard of that. Mm, okay. You know. So I just I love just finding things like this. You know, like you can win a Turbo Express and do the crossword puzzle, puzzle and stuff. Yeah, like. Just little things like that, you know, talking about babbages and shit. Oh, nice. I mean, I just, I really like stuff like that. How you much know? was this? 10, 15 bucks. Yeah, I mean, it's just finding a copy of these, it's easier to find Turbo Play. I they know. Sold a lot more copies. <laughs> this is really rare, no, like finding okay. a copy of these things. But how many of these were there? Do you know? I think there's only a handful, like maybe less than five. Oh, maybe okay. even two or three. And is this the only one you have? Yeah, this is the only one I've had. It's the only one I've had a chance of buying. So it's, I, I don't know, I'm, I'm a turbo geek, man. I'm just like to the fucking bone. Like this and Bomberman are pretty much the only two things that I absolutely obsess over where I have to have like everything that has to do with them. It's just, it's okay. just a thing. It's like a compulsion or something. So yeah, Turbo Edge, I'm going to put it over there on the, uh, on the newsstand with the other Turbo Play magazines. Okay. Cool. I figure it would make sense over there. That way. It's on your side of the room. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you were looking over there. Yeah, it's over there. Okay. That's cool. the, the turbo side of the room, so turbo edge, super cool. Okay, so next up, we're going to call this segment Willie Time, named after my buddy Willie from Arcade USA, one of the coolest dudes you'll ever meet. What's up, Willie? One of the, one of, I liked him so much, I brought him on one of my shows. He's the fourth host of Dirtflix. Really, really funny guy. Willie actually, um, not only did he send me some stuff for Christmas, because he's just that cool of a dude, but he actually brought me some uh, some little toys and stuff um, mm -hmm. when he was last year um, shooting the Arcade USA. Uh, episode where we were downstairs touring my arcade. So we'll go through the um, little stuff he gave me first when he was here, because he knows I like Pac-Man stuff. He got me Pac-Man The New Levels, um, which I guess is just like a homebrew Pac-Man game uh, for the NES. Kind of a neat yellow cart. I thought that was really sweet. New levels? Aren't, yeah. Aren't all the levels kind of the same in a way? I guess someone came up with a way to change it up. So it's like some someone, <laughs> someone figured out how to make Pac-Man even harder, so... Um, yeah, I'm looking forward to checking out, even though I'm not really that good at Pac-Man, but that's okay. I'll try. Um, he knows I collect lunch boxes, so he got me this really cool kind of Pac-Man lunch pail. No thermal? No, I, these didn't come with any. Like, I had one that was like this for Return of the Jedi. Oh, really? I used to keep my Legos in it. Like, I didn't actually use it for lunch, I just had, like, yeah. my Star Wars Legos and shit in it, but I love collecting lunch boxes, especially if they're metal, and really, this is really cool, and I really appreciate that. I'm gonna, I'm gonna put that in the collectibles room, I think. And uh, for Christmas, he sent me a couple stuff because he knows I collect Nintendo stuff. Um, he sent me the little 8-bit Mario. I love this. Yeah. Like this, anything like this, I absolutely love. I actually got that from the Nintendo store in New York. You serious? Yeah, I went there. I visited there one time and I bought that. It was super. Is cool. it really cool? I've never been there. Before. Yeah, it's a small store. It has two floors. But... Go fuck! I want to go there because it's Nintendo. Yeah, it was pretty cool. Um, this I think was a McDonald's or a yeah, Burger King that toy. Like, that looks like a. I think. Um, I'm trying to remember how this works. Oh. Like, you like push down like Mario setting the block, <laughs> and it's like if I can get it to work. Yeah, it's like a slot machine basically. It's so, like uh, Mario Brothers Three when you do that like game. <laughs> Why didn't I think of that? I'm stupid. <laughs> yes, yes, it, that's exactly what it is. Or like um, maybe like an expanded version of the thing when you hit at the at the end of a level Super Mario Bros. Three where you can get like Star Mushroom or whatever. Oh yeah. And dude, getting. The star on that when you got the third star in a row oh, really? was yeah. the most awesome <laughs> shit of your day because it was like dun, 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 and like, like fireworks pans and up and you see like the big star thing and I'm like yeah motherfucker because <laughs> you get an, you get an extra five lives oh, if you shit. get the star but it was like and everything else if you just got three of it it would just be like oh you got three but on this mm -hmm. it like the whole yeah. screen pans up and you're like you're a bad motherfucker dude yeah. that was you way should. cool shit so Willie. Thank you very much, dude. I so much appreciate it. You got to come down here and visit once again because he's not that far away. Oh, really? He's right. in North Carolina. Oh, okay. So okay. yeah, it's all, I have all these friends that are like all around here. East so, side, man. East it's side. fucking East Coast. I, I don't know the gang symbol for that because <laughs> East Coast. I'm pigmentally challenged. <laughs> so 
Sorry about that. It's all good. So, we got a little CD soundtrack action here, Mortal Kombat, the album. Basically, the Mortal Kombat version of the Killer Cut CD for Killer Instinct. Um, where you've got all songs performed by the Immortals, like, everyone made the a... Immortals? Yeah, the Immortals. Techno is huge. Like, you're like, oh god, it's European, it must be better. No, it's not. Um, so, I remember when everyone made a big deal about the Mortal Kombat theme song when the movie came out. Yeah, is, and, is that on there? Yes. Okay, good. Because this preceded... This was the song was out before the fucking movie was. Oh, out. okay, okay. Like everyone's like, dude, that's like the greatest thing ever. It's like, dude, that was on the commercial. Like, like that wasn't yeah. even that had nothing to do with the movie. I mean, it's great that they use that in the movie yeah. because they don't normally do that. But, dude, Mortal Monday. Yeah. I'm sure you remember that day. Mm -hmm. That was one of the best commercials I've ever seen. Yeah. I mean, just the dude standing in the middle of the street like, Mortal Kombat. It's like, why is he fucking shouting about this? Like, we all don't know that. You know why? Because they're a bunch of sweat lords. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking you're Mortal Kombat sweat lords. Imagine all those teenagers, sweat lords on Monday. Come on. Guys. Sweat, sweat combat lords, man. Sweat lords. Mortal <laughs> Kombat. They're in the middle of the street. And the, you see, like, one of the guys, what is it? Like, they're in a con. It looks like they're in a concert. One of the guys is like, uh, what do you call that when you jump off of the stage and people grab Stage diving. Yeah, it looks like he was like stage diving and, like, it's like a wave and shit. Alright, so if either of us ever becomes a DJ, I already know our name. DJ Sweatlord. <laughs> DJ Sweatlords, dude. Those dudes were the definition of Sweatlords. Mortal Kombat Sweatlords. <laughs> so last, but certainly not least, uh, we've got the Nuka-Cola bottle. It's it's plastic. You know, it, it, It's made to really look like it's glass, but it's shaped like the actual Nuka-Cola bottle in the game. Okay. So this is a gift from Mom. Thanks, Mom, um, for Christmas. She actually got it on Black Friday. So this one has kind of an interesting story to it that Miguel hasn't heard before. This is one that's going to make me sound like I'm a fucking terrible person, but I think it's funny enough that I don't care. Okay. So, how, how I got my hands on it is actually where it gets interesting. Okay. So, Mother Unit, in her infinite kindness, texts me on Black Friday and says, like, hey, I found this at a store and I know you collect Fallout stuff, which I do. I have a ton of Fallout stuff. I've got Pip-Boy, I've got the signs, I've got yeah. the bobbleheads and stuff. I love that stuff, the lunchbox. And I saw this, I was like, hell yes, I want one of those. So, turns out, man, this was like a GameStop exclusive, and these things are worth a bucket of money right now. Like, I'm talking going for like a hundo on eBay. I had no idea. I just figured, like, it'd be something cool for the collection, but mm -hmm. Jesus. Okay, so we fast forward to Christmas Day, right? And I'm going over to visit my sister and my two young nephews, who are also gamers. And my mother had told me that she had given this to my sister because they were out Black Friday shopping, and she'd forgotten to get it back from her. Okay. So she's like, hey, don't forget your, your thing with your sister. And I was like, okay, I'll remind her. So I get over there, and I'm I, like, before I even have a chance to ask for her, like, my two nephews are pulling me in, like, 50 different directions because they both want to play with yeah. Uncle James. You know, when you're when you're the gamer uncle, dude, you're like a fucking rock star. Yeah. You know, they've seen the arcade. They call me the video game legend. Mm -hmm. It is kind of cool to be someone's hero. I'm not going to get off on a yeah. tangent about that, but it's, it, it's cool that we have something to connect to on that. Okay, and this is where it gets interesting. I see my one youngest nephew walking around with this, and he's got it full of soda. Oh, really? And well, but when you buy it, it's empty, right? Yes. It's just an empty thing. And I'm like, I thought I was seeing things at first. I'm like, I was like, is that? And I'm looking at my sister, I was like, is, is that what I think it is? And she's like, we'll talk about it later. I was like, no, I think we need to talk about this right now. Yeah. And I'm like, what, what, what? And we wait for him to leave the room, she's like, we had a bit of a mix-up. I was like, okay. And she's like, this ended up in his Santa Claus pile. And I'm like, you've got to be fucking kidding me. Yeah. I was like, he's never even played a Fallout game before. He doesn't know anything. About he's, he's 10. Yeah. He doesn't know shit about Fallout. So it ended up in his Santa Claus pile. Okay, so there's two problems with that. Number one, my nephews are 10 and almost, no, they are 10 and 13 now. And they think that Santa Claus is real. I found out when I was like seven, and my parents told me. I didn't find out from one of my friends. Like, hey, Santa Claus isn't real. They told us one Christmas, yeah, this is really from mom and dad. I think 10 and 13 is a little old to think a fat dude is coming down yeah. your non-existent chimney. How they aren't getting made fun of in school is an absolute mystery to me. I don't know. I'm not their parent. I'm not going to make that decision. So here's what I did. I tried to reason with the little type, man. I was just like... Let me be the nice guy, let me be the nice uncle, let me see if I can reason this away from him. I was like, I was like, hey dude, we had a little bit of a mix-up, I understand I was in the Santa pile, but there was a little bit of thing, this is actually one that Grandma actually bought for me, bro. Like, you know, I'm a follow collector, you've seen the game, this is actually supposed to be for me. He's like, why was it in my Santa pile then? And I'm like, oh god, here we go. 
And I'm looking at my sister, I'm like looking at the other end of the table like, you kidding? Like, I'm really about to have this conversation right now? So I let it slide, I was like, look, I'm not going to pick a freaking battle with dinner, I'm just going to let it go. Okay. So here's where it gets funny, and this is where I'm a terrible person. So we fast forward to later in the evening, things are winding down for the night, and I'm getting ready to leave, right? Now look over on the dish rack. <laughs> yes. And this is right here, drying. One, The one nephew who jacked this, basically, was already upstairs, but the other one was still there, and I was getting ready to leave. I was like, hey, dude, I think I might have left some in your room. Can you go up and check for me? I didn't want to do it in front of the kids. Mm -hmm. My sister had her back turned. She didn't see anything and everything, so it's just me in the kitchen. I literally took this thing, <laughs> stuffed it in my coat, and left. Has, and, has, did she ever hit you back up for that? No, because I told her about it later. I was just like, hey, I jacked this. If you want to get mad, that's fine. <laughs> it's, I was like, I told her about it. I was like, you want to get pissed? I was already in the car, so it's uh, like, you can't stop me. But I'm just thinking, like, dude, it's not stealing if it's already yours. Yeah. This was supposed to be mine. I wasn't stealing from a kid. So I'm like, dude, he's not going to give a shit. He doesn't have any connection to Fallout. He's never played a Fallout game. He's 10. He's going to forget about this in like five minutes. Yeah. Because he got like a freaking stack of freaking Christmas gifts, like yeah. the size of a freaking 15 year old. So it's like, he's not going to care about this. He's playing Super Smash Bros. It, this shit don't matter. So I got the Nuka Cola bottle back. Sorry if you're watching this younger nephew but it's it's part of my collection dude i'm a rabid fallout collector so if that makes me a bad person whatever that's it's fine i would have just taken it in front of me <laughs> like, i why? guess miguel <laughs> is the worst person that i am <laughs> they would be like well why was it in my little santa patch i'd be like well, i don't know dude i'm just too bad too sad <laughs> And it'll pull the soda yeah. and then finish the soda yourself. And It'd be like, it. you know what? Santa was wrong. <laughs> yeah. Santa, Santa's an asshole. Or you could just dress up as Santa and be like, ho, 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 I fucked up, little boy. <laughs> <laughs> Let me take this and give it to your uh, oh, uncle really quick. Or you, or if you really wanted to be gangster, you could just be like, Santa's not real. <laughs> like, just like drop the truth bomb on him. Be like, your Santa, parents are lying to you. Santa, you look like Uncle Uncle James. Be like, oh, ho, ho, let me get this really quick. <laughs> oh no, I'll no. be right back. And I get like, that all the time. Five minutes later, you come through. You're like, ah, oh, I just saw Santa leave. He gave me this. He said it's mine now. <laughs> Santa was really jacked though, man. <laughs> it was really weird. I see them pecs. Holy <laughs> shit. So. That, that's my Christmas story, man. It's uh, <laughs> He hasn't said anything, and I've seen him since then. No one said it. I, I told yeah, my I mother, and she I laughed. Yeah, yeah. She was like, I, she He'll wasn't mad. She was it. like, it's yours anyway. She's like, if she gets pissed, it's too yeah, bad. Get over it. I was, I was, the look on my face when I saw him with the soda in there was probably just one of total horror, where I was like, <laughs> it looked like somebody like pissing on the Mona Lisa yeah. or something. I was like, what the fucking fuck? Fuck, you know what is going on here? It looks really clean though. It is, mate. Yeah, I rinsed it out and got it. Like the sticker is a little, you know, the BPA free because it went through the damn dishwasher. So it's just like, it's okay. I don't think anyone gives a shit about the BPA free sticker. That's not part of the thing. But yeah, it's it's in really good shape. Right. So cool. Right. Add that to the Fallout collection. It had a happy ending, the way I see it. Good shit. Sorry, when he's older, he can be mad at me. He might even inherit it someday. I don't know. Cool. We'll see. So, skidamadoo! That just wraps up part two. Thank you, everyone, so much for stopping by. Special thanks to my special guest. Not short bus special, just special cool. <laughs> System Psycho. That's right. Thanks, dude. You brought the freaking way cool pickups. I appreciate you inviting me again. Are you kidding me? Why wouldn't I? I, I don't even have pickup videos anymore like that, so. You know. We have we have the the contraband. I just realized <laughs> that that was still in, in focus with the camera. It's like. Ha <laughs> yeah. ha! You know, it's one of those. Like, so. No, but seriously, thanks for coming on, man. I really enjoy, enjoy, enjoy doing Retro Game Hall with you, man. It's really cool. This is yeah. a really good time. Appreciate it. Um, I think our, our pickups are kind of like, we're kind of like two sides of the same coin. Because mm -hmm. I went like hard Coke on this, and you went hard Pepsi. Okay. Because mine were like Nintendo, and you went with like a lot of Sega. Yeah. So we went with kind of like Red versus Blue. I like Sega. Kind of shit. Yeah. I, I, like, I like it all. Especially if it's turbo. Hell yeah. Orange. Fuck red and blue. Orange. <laughs> so, uh, we will see you guys soon. Um, Miguel, I know a lot of you in the comments have said, like, you really like it when System Psycho and I are, like, sitting here, like, just shooting the shit. He's not going anywhere. Yeah. I, I don't think, because I'm going to chain him up downstairs when we're done <laughs> shooting this. No. Like, we've got a lot of ideas. We've got a lot of stuff that we want to do. Um, maybe maybe an ongoing series. Yeah. If there's stuff that you guys want to see us do... There's a comment section. Let us know. Let's hear it. Like, seriously, you got ideas? We're all for it. We got some stuff cooking on the burners here. Oh, yeah. Stay tuned. 
we will have new content for you. It's really cool. Thanks again, Miguel. Thank you, man. Appreciate it, dude. But um, we need to go play some games right now. You damn right. In the fucking arcade. Oh yeah. Because that's what ballers do. Like share subscribe. Not sweat lords. Like <laughs> sweat lords. We're just gonna casually play. We're not gonna sweat lords. Sweat. Don't have our. We're not gonna sweat lord it. <laughs> Neck beard mother. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not gonna get that out of my head anytime soon. Okay. Right, yeah. Good. Retro game all sweat lords edition. Peace out. Howdy, adios. <laughs>